Huawei's Mate 70 phone is equipped with the Kirin 9020 chip, which has a performance improvement of more than 30% compared to the Kirin 9000s five years ago. Huawei's chips are still several generations behind Apple, roughly equivalent to the performance of the A13 chip equipped with the iPhone 11 Pro, close to A14. However, thanks to Huawei's own Harmony OS, Huawei phones run apps and games very smoothly, with low power consumption and good heat dissipation. Due to the inability to use TSMC's advanced foundry technology, Huawei cannot obtain chips below 7 nanometers. Therefore, Huawei and SMIC have made the chips bigger and thicker through packaging technology changes. This may be a direction for China's chip breakthrough, that is, to give up competing with the United States in advanced processes and focus on the actual use efficiency of chips. China's passive position in the chip war has not changed. The chip war is the most critical area of the Sino-US technology war. Once China makes a breakthrough in this field, all the technological hegemony of the United States will end, including the generative AI technology they are proud of. Many Chinese netizens are optimistic that China can completely independently develop the entire 5 nanometers, or even 3 nanometers, 2 nanometers chip production line, which is actually caused by a lack of common sense. With the technology currently mastered by China, it is very good to be able to completely independently develop a 28 nanometers chip production line to meet the demand for mature chips. China's domestically produced 7 nanometers chips are still made using ASML's DUV lithography machine through multiple exposures. China's 7 nanometers chip has a much lower yield than TSMC, and its production capacity cannot meet the huge domestic demand. At present, Huawei's Kirin 9020 chip is still manufactured by SMIC, so no key progress has been made in essence. However, the open supply of Kirin 9020 chips, which are allowed to be disassembled by technology bloggers, reflects that China can already stably provide 7 nanometers or even 5 nanometers process equivalent chips. Although such a production line inevitably uses a large number of Western equipment or components, it is certainly not afraid of U.S. sanctions. Otherwise, Huawei will not release the chip and expose its strength. What the Chinese are best at is reverse research and development. In recent years, China has purchased a large number of DUV lithography machines from ASML and has also purchased enough chemical materials such as photoresist from other key suppliers in the chip industry chain. At the same time, Chinese companies have reached a usable level in reverse research and development of these products. Huawei's launch of Kirin 9020 also marks the initial formation of China's chip supply chain and the complete failure of the U.S.'s attempt to block China's technological research and development through chips. In addition to independent chip production, Chinese people also hoard advanced Western chips through various means and even place orders with TSMC through shell companies to purchase its production capacity. It can be said that the Chinese use all means to defend the key nodes of the chip war. Kirin chip is the Stalingrad battle in the Sino-US chip war and even the entire Sino-US technology war. Whoever wins this key battle will be able to take the strategic initiative and the loser will lose the entire technology war after a long period of suffering. After Huawei's Mate 70 was launched on the market, sales were stronger than expected and users and evaluation agencies also gave it good reviews. In the future, Huawei will use similar chip technology to produce the Ascend series of AI chips to compete with NVIDIA. Huawei will also invest Harmony OS in the notebook and PC markets, starting with the government, state-owned enterprises, and sensitive industries and gradually replace the x86 plus Windows combination. China does not need to defeat the United States in chips and operating systems, it only needs to maintain its independent capabilities. Chinese companies and individual consumers, as well as other countries and consumers who do not trust the United States, will gradually adopt Chinese products. Just like when Huawei occupied the communications equipment market in non-Western countries, trust is a key factor. Now it is not the United States that is blocking China and decoupling from China. Instead, China is taking the initiative to get rid of its dependence on American technology 
and provide non-Western countries with reliable product options. This is a huge market, and such a market can also ensure that Chinese companies such as Huawei survive and continue to develop and iterate. Once entering such a competitive rhythm, the number of engineers in China far exceeds that of the West, and the hardworking and dedicated work enthusiasm of the Chinese people will allow Chinese companies to quickly establish competitive advantages and lay the foundation for victory. Perhaps five years later, when we look back at today, the release of the Kirin 9020 chip will be a decisive event. It marks China's transition from passive to active in the chip war and also marks that the scales of victory in the Sino-US technology war are tilted towards China.